but he already blessed us. So if we realize then that we are already blessed, he hath given us, what did he give us? That means that you and I, uh, all things that pertain, which is, and the word pertain is a verb meaning a part of nature. God have already given us everything that pertains to nature, and then he given us everything that pertain to godliness. And so think about that. You've got everything you need for natural living, and you have everything God you need for godliness. The word godliness here is the Greek word uh, eusebia, and, and, and it means the characteristic, the nature, uh, the projection, the attitude. So we have the attitude, the ability of God. He's already given us that. He's already given us everything that pertains to nature, natural living. So if we got that, then somebody said, well, if I have that, why, uh, you know, why I'm not, I'm not receiving it? Well, note what the verse goes on to say. Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Now, so if you don't have the knowledge of God, and that word knowledge is the word espinous, uh, and, and, and the word espinosi, uh, it means full discernment. You understand something? Full. Not only in part, but full discernment, and not only in full discernment, but complete comprehension. After being instructed or observing or being exposed to a thing or one becoming better acquainted with something known Privilege. Now, the only way you can get knowledge of something, and knowledge is accumulation of what you know. And the only way you can get that, you must be exposed to it, you must be taught, or you have observed it. If you don't observe something, you nobody teach you about it, and you're not exposed to it, you don't know it. And you cannot get and receive what you don't know because you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to handle it. And so all of these things come through the knowledge you have of God, uh, the exposure you've had with God, the personal relationship you have with God, uh, the time spent with God. All of these things is giving you what Jesus said that I've already, Peter said, I've already given you everything that pertain to nature, everything that pertain to godliness. Now, so who is it that we need to have that knowledge of? We need to have the knowledge of God. We need to have the knowledge of his son. He's the one that called us to this glorious. And when we use the word glory, it's the Greek word doza. And, and, and that's an adjective or it can be a subject. And it means honor. It means praise of God and, and self-manifestation in us. So God have manifested the thing in us that we can give him glory. God have manifested in us the thing that we can give him praise. God has manifested us that he is a present help in times of trouble. Yeah. Then honor and praise and God manifests self-manifestation in us. What essentially is a particular uh, a, a person in Christ? We have to understand who we are in Christ. If we don't know who we are in Christ, then we don't know how to get along with God. God does this in us with virtue. Now that word virtue is really mean excellent moral goodness. So you, you, got, you got then God have given us virtue. He given us grace. He given us uh, his, 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 his character in, in, in grace. He given us his character then in virtue. Naturally so, there's a life that we ought to live that is excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And that's what, that, that, that's what uh, Peter is telling you. So now if you're not going to do these things, that means you can't get it. That's why my people fail for what? Lack of knowledge. And so they want to say, well, I'm, I'm saved and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And you're saying that God has given me all these things. I don't, but it comes through the knowledge of Christ and of God. So then I'm going to focus the rest of this lesson on explaining how we can receive the things God has freely given us. All right, here we go. God used what we call amplifiers and intensifiers. Everybody say amplifiers and intensifiers. Now, in the writing word to help us understand what he is saying to his people. How do we do it? How do we do it? Amplifiers, when we talk about amplifier, it's a process of extension or enlarge or expand by adding details or statements. So when you amplify something, you give more uh, detail. Now, right now my voice is amplified because of this amplifier. 
but it's not just this amplifier, but this amplifier is hooked to something back there to make my voice louder so I don't have to stream it, everybody to hear me. I can speak at a normal pace and everybody can hear me because my voice is amplified. All right, so God then, that tells you one thing, God does not want to make it hard for us to understand him. So if I'm people, I can't understand God. He don't want to make it hard for us to understand. He's amplified it so you can do it. You can hear it. You can get it. Look at somebody say, we can get it. Then he used not only amplifiers, but he used uh, what we call intensifiers. And, and that shows us, that shows emotion. That shows some emotional thing. So what are some of the intensifiers? You know, I'm, I'm doing intensifiers right now because I'm moving my arms. These, these are all part of gestures and preaching. And point some you point. You point at children. Tell them this way, that way. These are all intensifiers. This is what I intend for you to do. Do this, do that. So these are intensifiers. So God used intensifiers to help us to do the thing that we need to do. So he's given us, building us up all through this. Now he used amplifiers to enlarge what we need to, to make it clear to us. And then he used intensifiers. So now, all right, now God has given you these instructions. This is what he used. And not only do he use those, but he also uses substitutions. And to assist us in understanding how he operates. And he used verbalization, which is speaking as if we, it's already done. He used verbalization to tell you things just as though it's already done, and then he used imagination. Now, these are five things here, and he plants a seed in our mind to help us realize our purpose in life. So what God does, you have nothing to imagine, you have nothing to magnify, you have nothing to do until God puts something in your heart. And so God puts it in your heart, and then God gives you the, 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 the fertilizer, the seed, the instrument, the, the apparatus, and everything you need to work it. But if we don't work it, it don't happen. It don't happen. But, but God has already put it in your heart. He's already put it in your mind. He's already put it in your soul. Now, now watch this. We're going to work it. We're going to work it. We're going to work it. Now. God also used imagination. He plants a seed in our mind to help us realize our purpose in life. We are to water and nurture this seed until it's grown into what God said. This new ministry won't start in the natural, but it will start in the spiritual. You see, everything that God put in your heart, folks don't see it. They can't see it. But you Imagine it. You, your imagination creates an image of what God wants you to do. If it don't happen inside, it'll never get to the outside. Okay, let me say it again. If it don't happen on the inside, it will never be exposed on the outside. So, watch how God brings it out. Watch how God leads us into getting the things that he have already prepared for us to have. Now, God unmanifested plan for our lives. His revelation sparked anticipation in the side, inside of us. So what does God do? He takes these, he takes the substitution, he takes the verbalization, he takes the amplifiers, he takes the extension, uh, and he takes the imagination, and he calls us to have an anticipation. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Did I lose anybody? <laughs> Did I lose anybody? He takes the amplified, enlarging stuff for us to see it. Then he intensified. Then he gives us an imagination. He gives us a substitution for us to bring out with ambition to amplify, to get enough guts, to get enough courage to do what he wants us to do. So the presence, watch this, watch this, the presence of anticipation causes the thing anticipated to be manifested. So if I don't have anticipation and I don't anticipate nothing, in Indian language, nothing from nothing is nothing. So I can't get nothing if I don't anticipate something. So I have to anticipate something and whatever I anticipate when I believe it, it come to pass. Watch this, watch this. In Matthew chapter 17, and get Matthew 17 now, and, and, and verse 19 through 21. 
Matthew 19, 17, and verse 19 through 21. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Talking about the devil. Verse 20 said, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now watch this. If we break this down, listen to that. Now, the disciples tried to cast the demon out. And you find the same story in St. Mark 9. And they couldn't do it. And so the man had brought his son to Jesus. And he told him, I brought my son to your disciples. And they couldn't cast the demon out. Jesus bring him to me. And they asked the disciples, went to him privately after Jesus had did and said, now, why we couldn't do this? And Jesus said, well, these can come out by, through by faith. He said, but now by, by fasting and praying. But here's the thing. He said, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed. Now, here's what we have taken that from. So all you need is a grain of mustard seed, a little faith like that, and let her do it. That wasn't what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about the little grain. He was not talking about the size of the mustard seed. He was talking about what the mustard seed produced. See, the mustard seed is just a little speck on your finger, but if you plant it and it's nourished, it grows up to a stalk. There are seeds bigger than mustard seed that don't grow up to a stalk. So it doesn't make any difference about the size of the seed, it's what the seed produced. He said it again. It doesn't matter about the size of the seed, but what the seed produced. So God's seed is greater than any seed. Because he said, if you just had the faith of that grain of a mustard seed, he'd have produced. And he said, nothing would be impossible to you. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing. Help me say nothing. Now, now, now. When he said, nothing should be impossible to you, there's nothing we're not able, unable to do if we embed the word of God in us and do what God tells us to do. That means there's nothing that we can't do. And what God does to help us with these intensifiers, to help us to build a thing the way we should do it, watch what God does. Watch how he do it. Now, in Romans 4 and 17. Romans 4, 17. Get Romans 4, 17. All right? Romans 4 and 17. As it is written, I made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened, the word quickened means make alive, the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Yeah. Now, what did God do for Abraham? Abraham, show you the verbalization now. Abraham didn't have one child. His name was not Abraham then. His name was Abel. He had not one son. He was just a father, a figurative prince. Sarah, before Sarah, didn't have no children. She was just a lady that looked nice. But God said, let me change their name with words. When God said to Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Now, think about this. You're going to be the father of many nations and you don't have one son to carry the name on. But God used words to get what he wanted to have. Watch how he did it. He said, I'm going to name you. Your name should no longer be Abram, but Abraham. And every time his servant would say, Abraham, they were saying, you're a father of many nations. Here's a man with no children. Father of many nations, Abraham. Father of many nations. What did Abraham do? He just believed God. Sarah, no children. A prince without children. Princess, you're over somebody. Sarah, every time they said Sarah, the word said, princess, you're over somebody. 20 years later, Abraham had a child. I mean, Sarah got pregnant, had a child. Named him Isaac. Laughter. Now she has something to laugh about now. Because last, Isaac brought forth Jacob, Esau, Esau, Jacob, 12 tribes, y'all ain't talking to me, 12 tribes that spread it out to earth. He started from nothing, but with words he created everything. You got to be careful what you say, because words have power. 
Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Thank you, Lord. So then, watch, 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 watch what he's doing now. And, 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 and then he turned around. We need to, to let our imagination, that imagination is my God, something that we need. To, our imagination portrays God's promises for our life. Imagination is mind pictures. Help me say they are mind pictures. And, 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 and something about imagination and mind pictures, nobody can look into your mind. No, they don't see it. Matter of fact, I'll just give you an opportunity now. Look over at somebody and see what you see in their mind. Tell me what you see. What do you see in their mind? <laughs> Nothing. Now, watch this. To show you that, uh, uh, wait a minute, to show you they got some imagination. Now, let me see the hands of you that have been imagining things and got images in your minds of some things you want. Now, they all got their hand up, but y'all didn't see nothing. You didn't see nothing. Now, you know why you didn't see it? Because imagination is something that you can't see in, with your natural eyes. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. But what happened with imagination? Watch this. So this is why I'm walking you through this. And I'm telling you, God has already given us all things. Now watch this. With that imagination, notice what happened. We need to let our imagination portray God's promises for our life. Mind pictures ignite our anticipation of what God has promised. So the picture in your mind is an anticipation. You, and you, sometimes we said, one of these days I'm going to have this uh, by and by. I can see it. I know I'm going to have it. But it's just imagination right now and it's in your, your brain, but nobody see it but you and God. Now, anticipation desires are the chief ingredients of what the Bible calls faith. What is it? Imagination is the chief what? Ingredients of what God called faith. Now, watch this. Anticipation is the desire of the chief ingredient that the Bible called faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. Watch this. Now faith is. Help me say now faith is. Now faith is. We all have heard this scripture. We know it, but do we really know how to operate? Because the first thing we get, got to get straight, it says now. And we use that as now, now. But that's not the way it's supposed to be used as right now. And it can be used as right now. But the procedure is this is how it act. Yeah. This is how it operates. Yeah. Now this is what you need to do. Now this is how you do it. Okay, I'm trying to help you all. So we've been taking now and saying now faith. It is now do it this way. But if you don't know how to do it. Our imagination supplies us with a mental picture, evidence of the things God promised to supply. He is a picture of what God promised to supply. All imagination are invisible. They are in the mind, but they are stimulated by strong anticipation. A strange phenomenon occurs. Other words, here's what happens when you have a good imagination. A non-seeable imagination jumped from the invisible realm into the mind into a tangible invisible realm to the conscious world. So what I see in my mind, if I add anticipation to it, that the anticipation becomes a desire. When I add desire to it, it becomes faith. Because faith has nothing to do with there's nothing to desire. If I don't desire nothing, faith can't do nothing. Because faith is... Present tent is. What is it? It is the what? It's the substance. What is substance? Matter. Everything that something can be made out of. Huh? There's nothing can be made without substance. So, I desire for something. I see it in my mind. So, Faith anticipate what I see in my mind that nobody sees but me and God. I got to have some evidence that what I saw is real. So until what I saw in my mind become real, my faith didn't work. But when I anticipated long enough, what I saw in my mind become real, then I got evidence. Evidence, here it is, can you see it? All imagination are invisible. They're in the mind. But as they are stimulated by strong anticipation, 
a strange phenomenon occur. The non-seeable imagination jumps from the invisible realm of the mind into the tangible, invisible realm of conscious world. If this process wasn't powerful, because see, here's what happened. Normally what you anticipate becomes what you want. And so we got to be careful. God even tells us, you, got, you can't just be careful how you let your imagination run away with you. Because your imagination is so strong. It's so strong. Watch it. Go, to, go, go with me quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want somebody to read loud, starting with verse 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. We can't fight with our flesh. We, we live in the flesh. Look at somebody say, we live in the flesh. But we can't use it to war. Read it. Our weapons. Now, listen now. Our weapons. They are not carnal. That means they are not flesh. They are not meat. But what? But they are mighty through God. To the what? To the pulling down a stronghold. A stronghold is that thing that's holding you the most. Everybody have stronghold. Whether it's a habit, whether it's a marriage, or whatever, you have some stronghold. But the, not, you can't do it physically. I forgot to announce uh, in, in my announcement, Ella William and his, his sister William, uh, this Wednesday, they'll be married 60 years. So somewhere in them 60 years to keep the devil, the devil had put stronghold, but they've been able to pull them down. They've been able to pull them down. Now watch this. Go ahead and read, read. Casting down. You see that? Casting down imagination. So you can imagine the wrong thing and there's some things in your mind you don't need them there and you need to get them out of your mind. Casting them down imagination. We can't allow evil imagination to take over. Cast them down. And do what? Every high thing, Every high thing that pushes itself up against the knowledge of God. Everything that pushes itself up against God, you got to cast it down. You got to get it out of your mind. If you don't get it out of your mind, you can't get Christ in your mind. And so you got to get it out of your mind. And then what you got to do with it? Bring it into captivity. Lock it up. Lock it up so it can't get out anymore. That's what they do with criminals. That's what they do with prisoners. They lock them up so they cannot function in society. Get it out of your mind. Lock it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, now. Because the vast powers of our imagination coupled with anticipation will, with, will, will, will keep our mind. Let me go back and read this again. Because the vast power of our imagination coupled with anticipation will help us to draw that which we anticipate into reality. So when we desire it and we, have a, we can see it, it will help us to bring it to pass. Now, you can look at this room and here's what we have to do we have to sometime substitute what we don't have until we get what we want okay. y'all hear me on this side so I'm talking to y'all over here now sometime you have to substitute what you don't have until you get what you see in your head now I'll give you a good example of that most of us in here want our own home. But until we can get our own home, we substitute getting an apartment. Okay, let me go over here. Y'all didn't get it over here. The apartment is not our house. It's not the dream home we saw. But we're there. We stay there until God give us what we want. In the apartment, oh God, I need some help here. I said in the apartment, when we're in an apartment, we know we can't go in there tearing down walls. 
there are some limitations. Do I have a witness here? You have to ask the owner. But when you buy your own house, oh Jesus, I need some help here. When you get your own house, you can tear out a wall. You can build a shelf. You can put, put whatever cup of carpet you want on your house. So you got to see in your imagination that God said, I got a home for you. You can describe it the way you want to. Let your imagination flow. Let it flow. Whatever you want, let it flow. Get the anticipation. Nothing can stop me. My God, with God on my side, I can make it. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. No, 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 no. Watch this. See, the devil is a thief. And, 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 and the devil desires to take away and steal what your imagination from God have given you. And the Bible said the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and that you may have it what? More abundantly. Now, because the vast power of our imagination coupled with anticipation will help us to draw that which we anticipate into reality. God wants us to keep our mind clear of images of things that Satan brings to our flesh. Now, the world have said, and this is true, and I could just start and you all going to finish before me because you've heard him say it. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. Now, that's not in the Bible. But it's true. Uh, when your mind is idle, that means you're thinking about nothing, the devil works in your mind. The devil have you thinking folks don't like you and they, people don't even have you on their mind. The devil have you thinking you know, people don't like you and they, everybody at you and they're trying to get you and the folks don't even know you. This. this is why God told Paul in Philippians, God want to tell you how to think. El Porter, get me again, Philippians 4, start at verse 7. See, God wants you to how to keep your mind so, so that you can get things right. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, start at 7 and 8, read. For, the, peace of God. the peace of God, absent of confusion, uh -huh. the peace of God, what did it do? All Nobody can understand God's peace. Nobody can understand how you have peace when it looks like everything is falling in on you. From their perspective, it looks like you ought to be not even making it. But you're coping. I said, but you're coping. Read it. It'll keep your hearts and mind. Read it. Through Christ Jesus. Read. Finally, brothers. This is what you got to do. What's the ever thing are true? Read it. What's the ever things are honest? What's the ever things are just? What's the ever things are pure? What's the ever things are lovely? Whatever is of a good report. If there be any virtue, not your morals. Do what? Any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Think on these things. Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that appear. Think on things that are not giving you self-gratification. Whatever it is, think on those things. But don't let the devil crowd your mind with junk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we got to be careful that we don't allow the devil to put a lot of, 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 of conjunctions in our life. Where we bag up and get junk that we don't need to get. God done cut it loose from it, and then we go back and but and and, and uh, but uh, shut up. Wait on God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what He told us to think on: things that are lovely, things that are kind, things that appear, uh, things that are virtue. These are the things God wants us to think on, and all of these are attitudes of God, and they are worthy to be praised. 
Now, 1 John chapter, uh, I want you to get 1 John chapter, 3 John, 3 John, chapter 1 and verse 3. This is what God wants us to understand. We can get in our system. I'm coming back to, I'm, I'm not through with uh, 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 Hebrews 11 and 1. We're going we're gonna to go, get that today. But I want, I'm giving all you things. These are what? Anticipators. And I'm giving you some amplifiers, some anticipators. Uh, I'm getting you all ready so you can understand what's going to happen. Hallelujah. All right? For I rejoice greatly. No, no, beloved. That's it. First John, third, third John, third John 1. one third John, third John, the third, second verse. Read it. Third John, the second verse. Yes. Beloved, beloved, I wish, this is what he said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, and be in health even as your soul prospered. Now, there's a lot of folks, they're in health physically, they got the muscles, they got everything together, but their soul is suffering. Their mind is messed up. The mind is messed up. Your mind needs to prosper along with your physical body. Our prosperity, health and soul prospers when we put God's word into action. When did it happen? When we put God's word into action. When we cast down imagination that should not be there. When we do not allow them to take over our mind. And, and, and so the, 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 the literal knowledge of God that each of us individually possess, God wants us to cast down every obstacle and every thought that is negative towards him. And he wants us to use our thought process, imagination. Get that imagination. Get that idea. Get that plan. God put it in your heart. Now you got to work with it. How are you going to work with it? How are you going to get it out of your heart or out of your spirit into reality? That's what you got to do. That's been the problem. We, we had it in our heart, but we don't know how to get it out. And so we said one of these days, oh, then we let it go and just let it go. But don't let it go. I want to stop by to tell you today that whatever imagination God has put and written on your heart, no, they can't see it. They cannot see it, but you see it. You see it plainly. You see it every day. You see it every time you pray. You see it every time you go. And don't let nobody talk about your imagination. Don't let anybody talk about your dream. If you tell a person your dream and they don't believe it, just wash them off and go ahead. Just wash them off and go ahead. Because you got to understand, with my dream, I got faith. You may not have faith for my dream, but I have faith for my dream. I know what God would do, so I'm not waiting on you to validate my dream. I've already been validated by God's word. If you don't ever validate it, God has already validated it. Because the Bible said, if God be for me, who can be against me? So then don't worry about it. If your best friend, you go as a child, this is going to happen. The Lord said, this. if they don't believe you, then don't worry about it. Move on. Look at somebody say, move on. Sometimes we just got to move on. And sometimes we can't tell everybody our dream because there's dream killers. I said there's dream killers. There's folk because they didn't do it, they don't want you to do it. And they can't see you doing what they were not able to do. So they're just dream killers. But my God, don't let nobody kill your dream. Don't let nobody kill your dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha, ah, my, my, my. You know, I could preach right now, but I, I don't want to because I want to get this over to you. You see, God wants us. God wants me to be powerful. He wants our thought process to be powerful. He wants our imagination and, and, and anticipation to be stricken with faith. Now, I'm going to close this lesson today, and I'm getting ready to close it. And, and if what I'm calling my closing is a, a deeper look into our imagination. I want to get you deep into your imagination. I want you to get you so deep in there until you can see it. Now, again, Hebrews 11 and 1, he said, now faith. Help me say, now faith. What is that? Faith is present tense. Now faith. It is a definite article. Now faith is the what? The is a definite article. The is a definite article. It can only be one president of the United States. Now, if it's more than one apple, then you call this an indefinite article. These are all apples. I have some apples and I have some oranges, but I only have one owner of the crop. I need some help, Holy Ghost. So we are all the peoples of God. We belong to God, and we are part of what we were called. Uh, we are part of articles. We are the participles. We are part of articles, but we're not the whole thing. And that's why I said, if God be for me. I said, we're not the whole thing. Look at somebody say, I can't do nothing without him. But with him I can do all things because all things were made by him. Hallelujah. 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 
Now watch it, watch it here. Get deep in this thing now. Now, now, uh, the, 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 the article, the, the definite article, the substance of the thing, uh, the raw material, and everything is made uh, that we hope not to be made. Uh, the evidence is the thing that aren't seen, or better yet, is the proof that something happened. Something exists. When I said something, I didn't, you didn't see it. But now I can show it to you. I got evidence. In court, the only thing that can stand up is evidence. It don't stand up what you say, but evidence. You need some evidence. So what is the evidence? I was sick and God healed me. That's evidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. It's been said that a picture is worth more than a thousand words. Everything that now exists was once in the invisible state. It did not exist. No, it didn't. And in Hebrews 11 and 3, it said through faith. Help me say through faith. We understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen was not made of things which do appear. So your imagination, help me say your imagination and your anticipation. God used those amplifiers. He used intensity. That means that I'm not going to stop. I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to intensify the thing. When the devil said I can't, then I'm going to move a little faster. When the devil said no, they're going to give me a little strength, another bump. So every time the devil tell me I can't do it, then I'm going to look at the word of God and tell me what I can do. The word said I can, I can, I can do what? All things through Christ. Through, that through Christ, that's what? Strengthen me. So I can't make it on my own. I just need a little strength from you, God. And God, with your strength, with your strength, help me say, with your strength, I become a different man. With God's strength, I become a different woman. With God's strength, my God, I'm able to leap over a tall building. With God's strength, I'm able to stop a train. With God's strength. Watch the intensifier. You want to know what an intensifier is? I told you. It was something that God uses to give you strength, to force you. The example. Well, here's an example. No weapon. Help me say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's an intensifier. Hallelujah. God amplified the thing. How do you get an amplifier? He said, though 10,000 fall at my left and a thousand at my right, 10,000 on my left and a thousand at my right, none of them. Help me say, none of them. None of them shall come by me. Glory to God. You want another intensifier? If God be for you, help me say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Yo, 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 yo. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our imagination must operate in the harmony with our faith. Why? Without faith. Help me say, without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we got to learn, we got to learn that there's a lot of things I can't see them. I can't see them. But I know they're there. I said I know they're there. I can't see how we gonna do it, but I know we gonna do it. I need some help, Holy Ghost. You gotta be like the leopards. They put them out of the city. The leopard was out isolated. They put them out, and then they, they put a pitch on the city and then let nobody come in to feed Israel. One of the men stepped out and said, the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he didn't see the food, but he said, by this time tomorrow, they're going to be food enough, and they're going to be selling a whole five barrel of flour for a dollar. And one of the men stepped up and said, if the Lord had windows in heaven, so that may happen. The prophet said, you'll see it, but you won't eat it. That night, God sent a noise in the Syrian camp. And they ran off and left all their food, the horses and everything. Here's some outcasts. Outcasts. Walked into the camp, and they ate all they wanted. 
they got them some gold and hid all they wanted. And they said, this is too much stuff for us. So we can't take all of this. And then they said, well, we got to go into the city and tell them about it. One of them said, wait a minute, you know we're not allowed to go into the city. We can't be among folks. And I believe one of them said, and it's not in the Bible, but if I'd have been there, I heard one of them say, we got to go and tell them anyway. Sometimes faith calls you to go in against things you're not supposed to go in against. Sometimes when they tell you that you can't do it, then you got to move up and do it. You can't look at your circumstance. You got to look at the circumstance of God. So they went in and told them that there's food left out here. They didn't believe it. They were running out. And that same man that said if the Lord had windows in heaven, it, then they would see it. He was coming out too. And the Bible said he fell down and they ran over and killed him. Trampled him to death. Don't, let, don't get killed for doubting God. I said don't get killed for doubting God. Don't get killed for not letting your dream come to pass. Get your imagination. See what you want. That dream that God has put in your heart. Don't let nobody take it. And I said this morning, and this is the God knows truth if it's ever been true in my life. I feel right now in my life, I am more stronger than I've ever been in my life. Ever been in my life. I have more confidence in God than I ever had in my life. And I know that people say, you know, man, now, now he's crazy. Talking about a worldwide ministry and he ain't got, he put folks here in Long Beach. But let me tell you something. They don't see what God has put in my heart. They don't know what God has put in my heart. They have no idea what God has put in my heart. That I don't even know how I'm going to do it. All I know is God is going to do it. That's all I know is God is going to do it. Sometimes it looks like God has to take everything from us in order to build us up again. I stop by to tell you, I'm on my way up. Hallelujah. 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 I'm on my way to where God wants me to be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can't see it, but I see it. I see it every day. I say I see it every day. I dream it every night. I say it every chance I get. I verbalize it. Thank you, Lord. I verbalize it. I, I, I have an imagination that I can't even tell my wife. I can't tell anybody. I just only talk to God. And you need to dream a dream that's bigger than you. You need to dream a dream so big that nobody can bring it to pass but God. But I'll stop by to tell you I'm more happier now than I've ever been in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I wish I had three or four people to stand up and give God some praise here right now. Give God some praise. 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 Hallelujah. Now while you're praising him, while you're praising him, how many of you got a dream in your heart? Praise God for that vision that God has gave you. Praise him for the imagination. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. 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 God, I praise you. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Somebody need to praise him for that promotion on the job. You need to praise him for that promotion on the job. Somebody need to praise him for healing. Somebody need to praise him for bringing your son out. Somebody need to praise him for restoration.
Perhaps there's somebody here today don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Or perhaps you do know Jesus, but you're just fallen by the wayside and your dreams shattered with you. God want to restore some dreams today. He want to restore some joy. He want to restore some peace. If your dream has been lost, your vision been shattered, I want you to come now. We want to pray. You don't feel God like the way you once felt him. You know you're not walking with him like you once were. This is your time to be restored. This is your time to be restored. All right, praise the Lord. This is your time to be restored. This is your start time to be restored. Is there another one? Is there another one? Is there another one? My way. The power of restoration is here. The power of restoration is here. The power of restoration is here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. God bless you. Somebody come help me. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Glory to God. Is there another one? Thank you, Jesus. To say. Oh, Jesus. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. Is well with my soul. And Lord, thank you, Jesus. The day when my faith shall. Father, in Jesus' name, every head is bowed, every eye closed. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your imagination. Thank you for your verbalization. Thank you for your intensifiers. Thank you for your amplification. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, God, for bringing into reality the things that you put in our heart. Every positive imagination Fulfill them now. Fulfill them now. Fulfill them now. Fulfill them now. Bless that person that's looking for a home. Bless that person looking for a job. Bless that person, oh God. Bless your people, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God heal. God save. God deliver. Restore backsliders. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's give God some praise for what he's doing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With my soul, oh, it is well, it is well. listen to me. It's all of you that are up here because we don't want people to receive God or get the restoration. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Get the restoration and you go into the same environment and you pick up the same thing before you know it. If you don't have a church home, we either take you in today I'll put you under watch care and you can stay as long as you want to until you find another place or if you have a place that you are and God did something for you, bless you, we'll write you a letter to your pastor if you want to and let him know 
that you came back to God. But we just don't want to send you away without any covering. Without any covering. How many of you have a church home? Do you have a church home? She wants to join? All right. I know what I see the faces. I see the face. So, how long you all going to be here? In Arkansas, yes. I know you was a camel when you left here, but now what are you now? A okay, all right. All right. See, I, I have to understand this, brother. She left here a camel now. I don't know what she is now. <laughs> uh, you don't know how long y'all going to be here? What about you? You come here? Huh? You can get reinstated when you get. Yeah, ain't no problem reinstating. That's just a word. Oh, you got work? We reinstate you then. When you bring him, we bring him back in. <laughs> and there's no problem. We, we are here to do what God asks us to do. My brother, you say you don't have a church home? I want to come in and watch care. All right. Let me start with you. What is your name? Yeah, I remember you came by, didn't you? Yeah, you came by. You came by. Praise God. You came by. We sit down and we talk. I'm glad for you. I'm going to tell you this. Hold the music. I'm going to tell you this. This is going to be a new day in your life. It's going to be a new day in your life. What we talked about, God going to move it. It's going to be a total change in your life. Because now, that picture you've been having in your mind of what you want, you know how to do it. There's a process. And God <coughs> is going to bless you. Give me a hand. The last name again was? What was your last name again? Forrest. Forrest. I got you now. I won't forget that. I, I, was, I played football in Forrest City, Arkansas. <coughs> I did. <laughs> Brother Forrest, as of this day, you're under the watch care of the Great Open Door Worldwide Ministry. Every opportunity you get, you keep up with us. Because this is a door that God is opening for you that you have been praying about, wondering about for a long time. Watch it come to pass. You are under the watch care of Greater Open Door Worldwide Thank Ministry. You. Thank you. Thank Your you. name? Fanny. Fanny? Yeah. Fanny. Oh, Fanny. Fanny. All right. Are you saved? Yes. You are. Okay. And she want to be a member? Yes. All right. Thank you. How many, this is your first time being here? Yes. First time. Somebody ought to be shouting something. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Fanny, as of this day, you are a member of the Great Open Door Worldwide Ministry. And we thank God for you, and we're just happy for you. God bless you. All right. And this is Parker now? Parks. Parks. Oh, not Parker. Parks. Parks. Uh, all right. Let me, this is your wife, so I just take, uh, reinstate her and take both of y'all in under watch care. As long as y'all are here, and we don't know how long they're going to be. That's what you said, right? So, Sister Parks, Brother Parks, you all are under the watch care of the Great Open Door Worldwide Ministry. We thank God for you both. All right. What's your last name? Rose what? Rosado. Oh, Rosado. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sister Rosado, <clears throat> we thank God for you, and I know you've been coming in for a while. And so we're going to take you. You want to come in? Remember, on the watch care. Oh, you want to reinstate? Reinstate. And as soon as your husband come in, you bring him up here, and we're going to reinstate him. All right. You are welcome. We thank God for you. Y'all come by. Was anybody else? Oh, here's a. Oh, where, yeah. Where you been here? <laughs> That's why. Well, listen, I don't remember you leaving for a long time. So we just giving you the right hand fellowship and reinstating you. And thank God. Where you been? You 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 haven't left, have you? <laughs> uh, okay. I, <laughs> all right. Today you are reinstated. God bless you. All right, silver. All right, you all stand right here. Y'all come on and give these people the right hand fellowship. Come on, give them the right hand what fellowship. A fellowship. What a joy divine in us everlasting love.